Hey guys, welcome back to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel. My name is Jeremy. In today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions about learning the saxophone. Now, I've taken these questions from comments on videos across the Sax Tuition YouTube channel, and I also made a community post about 12 hours ago and just threw it out to you guys to see what you'd like me to answer. Now, in true sax tuition fashion, I just have to say right up the front, if you're just starting the saxophone from scratch and you're not sure where to start, check out lesson one of the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. You can watch it for free right here on YouTube and I've put a link up there. Let's see if that works. Uh, and also down there in the description below. So check it out. Now, the first question I have here is from Mario and he writes, my question, and he's a complete beginner, is how soft or hard do I blow the jet of air? I could use trial and error, but would never know if I was right or wrong. Always suspected lower notes needed more air. Thank you. Well, Mario, that's a really, really good question. It's hard to put into words how much air exactly to use. Obviously, the more air that you blow in, the louder you get and, um, you know, the less air you use, the softer you get. So some of it actually is trial and error um, and just seeing, using your ears and, and letting them be the judge to get the volume that you want. Um, but one little thing that I like to think about is, you know, I've got my alto sax here. Imagine if we were to bend the bell of the sax uh, straight. So we are just to bend this all down so we've got it straight like a giant soprano and then did the same thing with the neck, right? So we've got just one long metal tube and you can't even probably get a good idea of that on the video, but it would be a very long tube. Now, if I handed that to you and said, here you go, Mario, blow into this, you probably think, man, that's a really long tube and you probably use a lot of air. And so that's maybe a good starting point for, for thinking about how much air to use. And I also like to think when I'm playing, I like to think about blowing air all the way through the saxophone and out the bell. So I'm not just blowing into the mouthpiece, but I'm really thinking about blowing all the way through and out the bell. It's only a, it's, it's just a mental thing, um, but it actually really helps and it kind of gets you in the right frame of mind um, for using your diaphragm and, and using proper breath support and all that kind of thing. So I hope that helps. The next question comes from Ray, and this was actually a comment on my soprano sax video. And he writes, how loud is it, meaning the soprano, compared to an alto? I can play my flute or acoustic guitar in my small apartment, no problem, but my alto sax is just too loud. Well, the bad news, Ray, is that the soprano isn't really that much softer than the alto. Um, it's maybe marginally softer, but I, I doubt it would be soft enough to play in your apartment if you can't play your alto in there, if that makes sense. And look, the other half of it is, let's say you could play, but you had to play pianissimo the entire time. Like you had to play ultra, ultra soft. That's not really the best way to practice anyway. Um, it's great to practice pianissimo, but practicing pianissimo all the time is, um, it's just gonna mess around with your concept of tone and embouchure and breath support and everything. It's not that much fun um, to practice being really worried about the neighbors. Um, I've been there before, I know what it's like. Sometimes I'll just sit on the couch uh, with my sax and I won't blow in, but I'll, I'll do some fingerings, you know, I'll practice some scales or something like that, or maybe try and recall a melody that I'm, I'm learning. Um, so look, you can do that, um, but the soprano is not going to solve that problem. Um, funnily enough though, I did see just yesterday that Yamaha are coming out with a new digital saxophone. Um, I forget the exact model number um, and I'm not sure the price, but I will put that up on screen right now. I'll, I'll do that in editing. And um, it looks like a, a, like a cyborg soprano saxophone. It's, it's kind of bizarre. It's got like a, a brass bell and like a normal uh, mouthpiece, but uh, everything else about it is digital. Um, now, digital wind controllers and digital saxophones aren't super new. Um, they've been around for actually quite a long time, but this one looks different because the key layout is 
basically identical to a saxophone and the keys look like they have a little bit of travel as well so it's going to feel um, much the same as a real saxophone i haven't tried one out if yamaha if you're watching please send me one i'd love to try it out uh, otherwise you know i might have to pay full price and just wait um, for it to arrive in the mail but um, yeah that's something that i'm really interested in looking at and so you might um uh, you might be interested in looking that, at that as well. The only thing is with those wind controllers is that uh, you can't really work on your embouchure. They don't pick up little changes to your embouchure. I don't think in that one that it registers vibrato or pitch bends or anything like that. So yeah, look, it's um, it's a bit of a trade-off, but if you, if you are desperate and you just want to learn the fingerings and, and have a bit of fun, then that could be a good option for you. Okay, my next question is from Dr. Steve Stein. Thank you, Dr. Steve. He says, what is it like transitioning from clarinet to sax? Now, clarinet is very similar in, in many ways to the saxophone. The embouchure is very similar. Um, what's different is with a clarinet, um, it's facing down more, right? If that makes sense, right? The clarinet's coming down like this. The saxophone is coming a bit more like this because of the, the curve in the neck. Um, so that might feel a little bit different, but most of the basics that you've already learnt on clarinet, as far as forming an embouchure goes, um, it transitions right across to saxophone quite easily. Um, another thing is, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the clarinet, but assuming that you have played for a little while, if you put the register key on, on the clarinet, um, all of those fingerings, right? Like three fingers down uh, in the left hand for a G plus your register key and, and the thumb, right? That's the same as the saxophone. So obviously on, um, on a clarinet, the, the top register and the bottom register, the fingerings are different. On the saxophone, they're the same. And so, if you just picture playing um, the uh, upper register uh, of your clarinet, those fingerings go straight to saxophone, right? We don't have, technically we don't have a register key, we have an octave key. So it's just one set of fingerings for the lower register and the upper register. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but yeah, look, if you already play clarinet, you're going to love the saxophone. Another thing you'll love about the saxophone is you don't have to um, think about covering the tone holes as you play, right? We've got keys, so you should be able to just press them down and create an instant seal. The only reason why you wouldn't create an instant seal is if you had some kind of problem with your saxophone. But um, yeah, it actually makes it a lot easier to learn. Okay, next up we have um, five questions from Lakia. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right, Lakia. Do you have any tips on finger motions switching from one note from the other? Yes, I do. I'm very big on keeping your fingers on the keys at all times um, or as close to the keys as you can at all times, right? I know there are going to be some times where you just, your finger just raises above that. Even I do that. Um, but yeah, keep your fingers on the keys. In fact, I've even pulled out a little clip um, from the Sax Tuition Beginner Series talking about just that. I see a lot of beginners when they play, right? Their fingers are flying around like this, right? That's a really um, inefficient way to play. And so I'm just a bit of a stickler on that. So um, I think that answers your question. I hope it answers your question. Um, try and keep your fingers on the keys and make those transitions as smooth as possible. What tips do you have about playing high and low notes? Another great question. Um, I made a tone tips video um, about this and I think the video is called how to play in any register with ease, I think. Um, but basically the idea is if you look at a professional saxophone player, right, you'll notice all these little changes to their embouchure and their bottom jaw as they play. So one common misconception that beginners have is that once you get the right embouchure, that's it. It just locks in place. It stays like that for the upper and lower uh, octaves. Um, and it doesn't matter where you are, you just keep that same shape. And that's not true actually. We change our embouchure as we play. So in general, when you're playing your low notes, you wanna relax your bottom jaw. Okay, so this comes down a little bit. You still keep the seal going with your lips, 
right? But you think open throat and just more relaxed and that way your bottom register, those low notes will come out nice and strong. It's the same, well, it's the opposite on the upper register. As you go up, you wanna just support the notes a little bit more. And it's really important to know you don't wanna bite, okay? We don't wanna bite down on the reed as we play. We just wanna support those upper notes um, a little bit with our bottom jaw and our bottom lip, okay? Another thing is just to practice your long tones with a tuner, okay? Because you can sometimes overcompensate. You can actually use a bit too much pressure on your upper register and push those notes sharp. That's very common. Uh, and sometimes you can back off too much on the lower register and make those notes flat. So the way to get around that, practice your long tones at least five minutes when you start to uh, when you start practicing your sax every time um, and use a tuner. The one I really like is called Clear Tune. Um, it is, I think, about four or five dollars um, on the App Store. It's on Android and iOS, but I think that's four or five dollars really, really well spent. Um, it's a great tuner. It's very, very accurate. It shows you exactly where you are. Um, it's got a tone wheel and like a fine tuner thing. So it's very visual, it's easy to use. Um, and so practice your long tones with a tuner. What tips do you have about sight reading? In my experience, most students don't really struggle as much with reading the pitches like F, G, A, whatever. Um, if you are having trouble recognizing the notes, then just take a little bit of time away from your saxophone, maybe just trying to write them in on the staff use flashcards if you want. Um, you don't need the saxophone in front of you necessarily to learn um, the, the pitches and, and where they are. The thing that most students have trouble with is rhythm, okay? And what I'm uh, big on is tapping your foot when you play. Um, so keeping that nice steady pulse going uh, with your foot, right? And that means that you're feeling the pulse in your body as you're playing. The other thing that I do very often is I actually count aloud in my head. So I'm literally playing a melody and I'm thinking one, two, three, four. Or if it's a really tricky melody, uh, if there's a lot of syncopation and stuff as well, then I'm thinking one and two and three and four. And so I'm getting all of the eighth notes in there as well. So if we've got a lot of eighth notes that are off the beat, we can think one and two and three and. Um, now, if me just saying this to you is just going straight over your head and you're thinking, Jeremy, what on earth are you talking about? I really recommend checking out uh, my free uh, Learn Music Theory mini course. It's just three videos. The first two are on rhythm, the third one's on pitch. Um, and it comes with a free a PDF ebook that you can download and um, that will go along with the videos. Um, so if you're not sure what I'm talking about by talking about eighth notes and syncopation and all that kind of stuff, check out those videos. Those will go over the basics for you. That should put you in hopefully better stead for uh, sight reading. Next up we have, what tips do you have on staying motivated to play your instrument? I think listening's really, really important. I think it's important to have something to aim for. Um, finding either a genre of music or a particular artist or a band or something, anything that incorporates the saxophone that really just grabs you. Um, you know, hopefully it grabs you on that emotional level, um, not just like a, uh, oh, you know, that person's quite good at saxophone. Hopefully it's just, something that you love and channel that, right? You may not be able to play that music when you first start out, but it's something to aim for, right? And it gives you a concept of the tone that you're going for. Um, and so I think if you don't have any influences or inspiration, um, you know, from other saxophone players, then it can be really easy to just wander off and and lose track of um, why you're learning the instrument. So I think it's really, really important to listen, find some sax players that you love um, and try and channel that and use that to motivate you to practice. How can I have a better tone with the alto saxophone? Um, so many things, so many things. Um, it's that's, that's a too big of a question to just answer in this video, unfortunately, but check out my tone tip series. I think there's 
five videos now, maybe four. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they're, they're quite short and they're on different topics relating to tone. Some of the, the things that I think are really going to improve your tone are just like um, finding the optimum um, uh, tension with your bottom lip and your jaw, right? Not being uh, too loose, but not being you know, squeezing so that you shut down the reed, making sure you find the sweet spot on the mouthpiece so you're not too far on or too far off. Um, there's lots more things as well, breathing. Um, yeah, too many things to go over in this video, but check out that series. Um, as, as I said, it's on YouTube, it's free. Um, I'll put links to that below and hopefully that will help you out. Next up, we've got Caden. Uh, who has asked a few questions as well. His first question is, why should I play the saxophone? Well, my guess, Caden, is if you're asking that question and you're on a saxophone channel, you're probably at least already a little bit interested in the instrument because that's the first thing, right? You, you should hopefully love the sound of the saxophone. You should be really um, excited about it. And, and that's you know, that's a great reason to learn um, in itself. Um, and that's not something that anybody can convince you on. It's just something that you arrive at naturally. But um, since you asked the question, um, let me just speak from my own experience. I've been really lucky in my career. I've played, um, I've played at Coachella. I've played at, uh, I've played at a bunch of TV shows, Jimmy Kimmel and Conan and, um, I've played in stadiums before. Uh, I'm not doing this just to like uh, <laughs> say how great I am and what a great career I've had, but I've done all of that stuff, but I've also played in concert bands and orchestras and marching bands. And when I really think about it, there's not too many instruments that you could learn which can comfortably coexist in all of those areas, you know. If you play the saxophone, you can play in jazz band, you can play in a funk band, um, you can play with a pop artist, you can play um, Latin music. Um, there's all of that sort of stuff. But you can also play classical music, you can play in an orchestra. Um, and those are all amazing experiences, you know, and they're all worth having. If I picked up electric guitar, um, absolutely, I could play in a rock band, pop band, jazz, bunch of stuff but I'm probably not gonna be able to play, say, in an orchestra or play in a marching band, right? Because that doesn't really suit. So the saxophone's incredibly versatile. What saxophone does Jerry Johnson play? Uh, I believe he plays all of them, but primarily he plays the tenor. How long does it take to learn saxophone? Well, that's another really curly question. I'm still learning the saxophone, you know? Um, I'm a professional and I can't think of any other professionals that would say that they're not still learning the saxophone on some level. It's a lifelong pursuit, but I know that's probably not answering your question. Um, I would say if you wanted to play like, let's just say pop melodies or, um, uh, jazz melodies or just you know, relatively basic stuff that's still musical and still, you know, people would want to listen to, I would say anywhere between about three months and two years. And I know that's a massive gap, but I've seen students just take to the instrument and literally in, in a few months, they're already um, playing melodies and, and doing some really interesting stuff. Um, and I've seen students just take their time and maybe it takes them a couple of years to get to that level, but it really all boils down to practice and practice all really boils down to time. Um, when I was studying uh, music at uh, university, I was doing probably a minimum of three hours practice a day. Um, I definitely don't do that now. And, um, I haven't really done that since, to be honest with you. Um, but that's to operate at a really, really high level. I would be dedicating 20 or 30 minutes a day to practice. If you can do that five or six days a week or even five, four or five days a week, um, you're gonna progress relatively quickly. Um, so that is something I think just to think about is, is how much time do you have to practice? 
um, because that's going to gauge that that's going to be the biggest determining factor in how quickly you're going to progress. All right, final question, and this is very very appropriate, um, being directed at, at me and and sax tuition in general. Can I learn to play saxophone just by watching videos, or do I need private lessons? Well, I can tell you, Caden, I obviously run sax tuition, so I'm a little bit biased. Um, but I still teach privately as well. And I think there's pros and cons of both. Um, the biggest pro I think of learning through videos um, is that you can work at your own level. You can replay stuff as much as you like. Um, and what that teaches you is to be self-sufficient. You know, it teaches you to be inquisitive and um, to be able to kind of self-reflect, you know, and find the parts of your playing that need the most work. Now, it's really hard to do that just by looking at disjointed um, videos online on, on YouTube, um, even though it's ironically going to YouTube. Um, I really suggest using a course. Now, it doesn't have to be sax tuition. Um, it could be another great course online, but I think it's important to have that continuity, right? It's important to have like a cohesive structure that you're working to and not just kind of blindly uh, picking things from across the internet. Um, there's lots and lots of great um, testimonials and students that have emailed me from all over the globe who've used sax tuition and, and have really gotten results out of it. Um, so. In short, yeah, absolutely. You can learn um, online. Of course you can. I wouldn't be doing this if you couldn't. Um, but I, I'm not, I would never ever downplay um, the importance and the, the, the wonderful opportunity it is to get a private lesson. So maybe if you can afford to do both, if you want to get a online course um, and work through that, and then maybe rather than having a private lesson every week, Maybe you could have one every few months, you know, and just check in with someone. That's maybe a really good cost-effective way of doing it. Not that you need to do that, but um, that's also another great option for you. So I hope that answers your question. Well, guys, if you have any questions that you want me to answer for the next video, do leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you are looking for a course, which takes you through all the basics of playing the saxophone and then also continues beyond just the basics and, and um, helps to develop your tone and gives you a really good structure um, to build upon, then check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's 12 lesson videos, it's a 68 page ebook, and it's over 200 play along tracks. Uh, and they all work together as a seamless package. You can watch lesson one for free right here on YouTube. Um, I've put a link to that, as I said, in the description below. Um, and of course, if you do want to just dive in and get the whole series, um, I'll link to that below, or you can head to saxtuition.com. Well, thanks so much, guys. Subscribe to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel for more great saxophone content, and I'll see you all again soon.